How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how I type complex dictionaries in Python. Because most of the time when I create a dictionary, I'll do something such as person of type dictionary of string to string or integer equals someone named Bob and his age will be set to 25. And this is usually how I would type a dictionary. Now, realistically, imagine you pulled some data from the internet in the form of JSON and you converted it to a dictionary. To type something like this takes a lot of effort. As you can see, we have a lot of fields here of type integer, of type list, and we even have some nested dictionaries, which really make this hard to type. So I'm going to show you a few solutions that you can use to type dictionaries. Now, the first one is using a type alias. And this is one that I don't really recommend because it's pretty complicated and it doesn't really add anything to your program, but more lines of code. So here we can say type person and then we can paste in the data type, which I'm not going to write out by hand. All I did was hover over person and literally copy all of this because that's the current inferred type of this dictionary. So what I'll do is paste it in here. And as you can see, if I were to zoom out, this type annotation is huge. And all it says is that all of the keys must be of type string and that all of the values can be of these types. So if we were to use this here, we could say person is of type person and we were to try to enter a set. For example, here, instead of just passing in an email, we can pass in a set which contains an email. You'll see that the static type checker is going to complain because nowhere in our type annotation did we say it's okay to put a set of type string inside this dictionary. So this type annotation works, but it's not ideal. And if we want to access the data from this dictionary, we can access it just like with any dictionary. To access the name and age, we would refer to the name and age. If we want to get some nested values, we're going to have to do some digging, but everything's going to work like a regular dictionary. The type annotation does not change anything. Now, the second approach is to use a typed dictionary, which we can import from typing. So from typing import typed dictionary. And to use a type dictionary, we need to create a class and inherit from it. And what we're saying inside here is that there must be a key in this dictionary named name of type string. All of these names are the requirements of what should be included in the dictionary. If here we decide to exclude the email, the requirements for this dictionary are not going to be satisfied. So we must include a key called email. And I know you're probably wondering, where are these? Well, we still have to create those. And I'm just going to paste them in and explain it real quick. So for the structure of this dictionary, I actually have to create several classes that inherit from typed dictionary. Right here, we have an emergency contact. And if we go to our data structure, you'll see that down here, we have a nested dictionary, which is an emergency contact. So that's what I'm referring to there. And this is located inside the contacts. So going back up, you'll notice that I'll have another class or another typed dictionary, which contains the emergency contact. So we use this for the contacts. And contacts is another nested dictionary, which is why the contacts inside this person are referred to as contacts. With each one of these, we're just diving deeper and deeper into the typed dictionary. And considering that the address is also a nested dictionary, here we created another class for that so that we can put it inside the person. So again, the benefit of using a type dictionary is that we are required to use the correct key names and values. For example, in email, we can't pass in 100 as a value because that does not follow this type structure. The key here must be of type string and must be named email. And we cannot exclude any of these fields because then it will no longer follow the structure of this person. Now, this isn't a full typed dictionary tutorial, and there is some extra functionality that you can use with type dictionary that allows you to make certain keys optional. If you're interested in a full typed dictionary tutorial, do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to make a video about it. But now with all this being done, if we ever want to access the information, we just have to do the same thing we do with regular dictionaries. The type annotation changes nothing. It is only used for the static type checker. So if we were to run this, we will still get back all of those values. And for those of you who are new to the world of typing, even if we do not follow the type annotation closely, we can still run the code and nothing's going to change. 
We're doing all of this to give the static type checker some extra context and to make sure that we're passing in the correct type. Because if we use this with a function, sometimes you want to be sure you're passing in the correct type. Because if your function's expecting a dictionary of type person with an email and you pass in something like this, it's going to raise some red flags. And even if it's not going to prevent your code from running, it's still going to give you the chance to fix it before you run it. Like right here, I can just insert the email and the syntax highlighting will go away. And finally, moving on to solution number three, which personally is my preferred way to work with dictionaries. And essentially we're going to do the exact same thing, except this time we're going to be using data classes. And funny enough, it's going to follow the exact same structure as the typed dictionary, except this time each one of these classes are annotated with the at data class decorator. So at the top, we have an emergency contact, which contains a name, a relation, and a phone. As you can see down here, we have all of this. Then above that, we're going to have another data class, which contains the contacts. So this contains a list of phone numbers and an emergency contact. Then we have one for the address and one for the entire person. Now, instead of calling this person, we're just going to call it data. And we're going to pretend that we just got this data back from an API request. Unfortunately, we can't just say this is of type person because here we have a class and here we have a dictionary. So what we need to do is extract all of this information and put it inside the data class. So going all the way down to the bottom, here we're going to create a person of type person, which is going to equal a person. And inside here, we'd have to start our beautiful journey of populating this data class. So the name, would equal the data at the index of name. The age would equal the data at the index of age. And we would have to do this for all of the fields. And ideally you would do this once and then create a function which automatically inserts all of this information into this data class. For this example, I used AI just to populate the object because it is a lot of work and I just want to demonstrate what it will look like when it's finished. And here I'm not even using the data that we pulled from the internet, but I just want to show you that I'm populating it with the information and what it will look like at the end of the day. So here we were able to instantiate this person. And the benefit of doing this is that we can use dot notation, which for me is a huge plus. And for any end user makes life just so much easier, especially if you're using a code editor. It's so hard to make a mistake when you have dot notation on your side, because now we can just refer to the name or the age or to the address dot city. We don't have to worry about making typos when trying to access certain keys using the dictionary type anymore. And when we run this, we should get the exact same output as we did when we were trying to access the information via the dictionary. And I especially love this approach for when I'm trying to access nested data. And just to show you this in lifetime, what I'm going to try to access is the emergency contact. And what I want to get back is the phone number for the emergency contact. So here, what we're going to do is print the person dot contacts. And here we can pass in emergency contact and phone. We were able to do all of this using dot notation. Otherwise, if we were using the raw data, it would look something more like this. Print data at the index of contacts, at the index of emergency contact, at the index of phone. And my code editor did not want to help me out with that. I'm sure some code editors will help you out, but mine did not. But again, I much prefer this approach to this one over here. It just makes it so much easier for me to access information. Now, once again, realistically, this wouldn't look like this because you'd be accessing the information directly from the JSON or from the dictionary. So everything here would look more like data at the index of name, and then you would have to do that for the rest of the fields. You'd be taking the information from the dictionary and converting it into an object. And the major downside to this approach is that it takes a lot of setup. I mean, here we had to create the data class or at least the structure of the data class. And then we have to extract all of that data and place it inside this object. So it is a lot of setup. Now, which approach you use is up to you. Personally, I would recommend data classes if you expect a lot of other people to be using your code because it just makes it so much easier to access attributes, even if it takes a lot of setup. Otherwise, I would recommend the type dictionary if you still want to work with a dictionary and you don't want to worry about converting that dictionary into a data class because maybe it's just too much effort to convert it into a data class and you don't really care about doing that. Also, the native dictionary type is going to be more performant 
then creating an object each time you want to use the information. So that might be another consideration for using a type dictionary over a data class. You won't have to create all these random objects just to access the attributes. Here it's quite easy to access this information, but it's also quite easy to make mistakes. So at the end of the day, it's completely up to you which approach you use. And again, this was not a dedicated video on how to use data classes or type dictionaries. If you feel like you need a dedicated video for type dictionary, do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll add it to my to-do list. But otherwise, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.